Welcome to Not Quite Therapy. Today we're with Dave Robson, and uh, he is a podcaster, a writer, and an entrepreneur. He is also an actor. Um, how are you today, Dave? And so much more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so much more, yes. I'm doing real well, Jenna. Thank you. So your podcast is um, the Roundtable Podcast. So why don't you give us a little bit of information about podcasting and the roundtable? Well, the roundtable podcast is—it's uh, actually—it's many things. There, it's a—it's a jewel of many facets. Uh, but uh, at its core, at its very essence, uh, excuse me, the idea is that we bring writers onto the show to pitch a story idea to us and an established author or editor or luminary of the literary set in some way, shape, or form. And so we give them eight minutes to pitch their story idea, and then the, the guest host, the author, editor, myself and my co-host, uh, we dive in. We, we, we affirm what works, we raise some questions about what may or may not be working, and offer a bunch of what-ifs of uh, these folks, what can you do with this? We could we could make this happen. Uh, what if you gender flip this character and turn them into a robot? <laughs> All kinds of craziness goes on, but ultimately it's it's a brainstorming experience, uh, and and everybody's bouncing ideas out there. What we found time and again is that you get ideas from other people's ideas. There's an inspiration cycle that revs up as you go through this. And uh, inevitably, it's, it's, it's a creative maelstrom. Uh, not just for the people that are actually brainstorming the stories, but anybody that tunes in, uh, I, I can vouch for the fact that you will, at some point while listening to the podcast, shout at your computer or at your car stereo, say, but you're missing this brilliant idea. <laughs> and, and, and that's awesome, and that's fabulous, because that means you're engaged and your creative engine is working, too. Uh, and that's, that's what we're about. That's what we do. Yeah, I have been on the end of the shouting. Um, I love the roundtable because all writers read, so you can give suggestions and critiques from both the reader and the writer aspect. And I think it's just wonderful. No. Absolutely. Well, and, and that's you know that's part of the roundtable. There's also uh, we do 20 minutes with with the actual guest host. We yes. interview them, uh, uh, and I, I have become rather renowned for my stalkers lengthy in the interview uh, introductions of these individuals. Which you know it's it's not just about Dave expounding on a great length. I. I wanted to get all of that background stuff out of the way. I don't want to spend time in the interview, you know, when did you, how did you get started writing? Well, I just told you because I gave you their childhood, adolescence, their love life, and their entire professional career. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we can get right down to the good stuff and start digging into their craft and how they, how they create, how they build characters in their stories. So that's an aspect of the route. We also do the... Um, the dialogues, mm -hmm. where we gather together uh, people who are invested in some aspect of speculative fiction. We've done them on transmedia storytelling. We've done them on the impact of gaming on fiction, speculative fiction. Uh, and, and there's just discussions that need to be had and should be had with these individuals. Uh, so we try and make those available as well. And there's also the one question, uh, where we have one question like, what makes a good protagonist? What makes a good antagonist? And then we ask like eight or nine authors that same question, and we poll their response, and then of course discuss them and wax traps on on our opinions of their response. Uh, but it's it's a great way to get multiple perspectives on the same topic. So, so really, at the roundtable, we're all about really exploring and digging into speculative fiction and the craft and process of writing good spec fit stories. Great. Now, um, under that, or over the Roundtable podcast, you also have Wonder Things Studio, which is a new venture for you, but one you've been 
working on getting together for a very long time. Yes, absolutely. That has been, uh, well, it was, it came about this way. You know, I had the round table. I've been doing the round table for about three years now. And it, it, then I came up with this other idea that we'll talk about later for Vex Mosaic. Uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and that was going to be a big thing, and there's going to be all this stuff. And then I'm also in the process of writing a novel collaboratively with Alistair Stewart and Colin and Barnes that I want to open up as a collaborative story verse and, and you know, generate stories and user-generated content to, to build this world. And there's other, there's other stuff in my brain that's happening all the time, and it's like, okay, I need to pull this together somehow. I can't just have this over here and this over here and that up there. So I created Wonder Thing to create a business entity uh, and a, a studio entity that could embody all of those things. Uh, it also embodies my, my vocal narration business. Uh, I'm currently narrating uh, novels for Tim Ward, uh, for Terry Irving, and also I just signed a contract with Scott Roach. I'm going to get to recording these bad boys and clear some of these off the table. Yeah. Uh, but that's also a part of the Wonder Thing vibe. Uh, I do uh, book, uh, book trailers. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I can do editorial work. I do editorial assessments of people's works. Um, you know, basically taking all of those skills that I've acquired, A, as a theater major, and B, through three years of roundtable, and putting it to use and making it available to folks that want it. Great. And um, you've already touched a little bit on your writing. Um, other than... Um, what you've already mentioned, do you have any works out there that people can read? You know, I don't. Uh, actually, if you, if you go to Amazon.com and search for my name, David Robertson, you will actually find two comic books that I wrote with my girlfriend for Eclipse Comics True Crime <laughs> back, back in the day. This was like in the 90s. Um, or, you know, it was the 90s, it was the early 90s. Uh, so there's those. Uh, but other than that, no, uh, my, my writerly debut is going to be uh, the, the Shattered Worlds novel that I've been working on for about a year, year and a half now. Uh, it's called Chasing the Devil, Memoirs of a Reluctant Pirate. And uh, I'm writing it in collaboration with Colin F. Barnes and Alistair Stewart. Uh, basically, each of us is taking a different POV character, and we're writing chapters from that POV character, but each chapter advances the narrative forward, and it's, it's been a fascinating process. Getting, getting Colin and Alistair's insights into this foundational world that I've built, and the depths that they have plumbed in the exploring of their characters that has changed and transformed, and I think made better not only the story, but the world in which it takes place. Uh, so that's going to be really my big debut onto the scene, but it's certainly, well, maybe my first, it won't be my last. That was my Before question. Coming. I was, yeah, I was just about to ask, would you recommend writing collaboratively or would you never do it again? <laughs> and you just answered that. So that's good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 cannot, I cannot tell you I can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I cannot speak highly enough of the collaborative process uh, because you know, people people envision like you know Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss with the Dragonlance novels. They they picture them in the same room at the same time typing, and they think, "Oh God, how could you do that?" That's not the way it works. No. Uh, there is a gathering of thought and creativity. Uh, and an exploration of story and character, but then you go off and you do your own thing, uh, and and then you come together again and say, well, these two don't quite work together this way and this way, so you edit and you smooth it out. But what you end up with is one voice that is actually the combination of two or more voices, and the the creativity, the perspective, and the depth of all of those voices comes together. It's not easy. Uh, it, it definitely takes a certain mindset, but uh, it's very rewarding if you can make it work. Wonderful. 
All right, why don't we get into our interview questions because I could sit here and ask question after question after question about <laughs> RTP and um, your novels and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and get busy. <laughs> um, who is your greatest influence? <laughs> I, I would have to say it would have to be Joseph Campbell uh, is actually probably my biggest influence in life and in craft um, Joseph Campbell studied myths all over the world hundreds of cultures thousands of myths and he's got these patterns these, these recurring sequences and cycles and structure uh, and codified them, basically. And I'm not sure many of your, your listeners have, have heard of the, the hero's journey and the hero's cycle. A lot of people have tried to uh, lay that down as a template for, for storytelling, and it works very well. But Joseph Campbell found one truth out of all of those thousands of myths, and it's, it's the truth that I, I hold the closest to my heart and in my life, and that is follow your bliss. That is what he found to be the ultimate truth of the, the, the distilled myths of the world. And I have found time and again that if you pursue that which you love, uh, and that you love honestly and truly, that it's just, it makes you better, it makes you happier, it makes you, it fires ideas and inspirations in your mind. If you pursue that, this is gonna sound kind of woo woo, but the universe kind of opens a little bit. It parts for you. It, it, it creates opportunities. You know, I always say at the end of my podcast, you know, you find what you're looking for. And if you're looking for awesome, you will find it. And you know, that's part of my spiritual belief, but it's also, you know, try it. Try it for, you know, a week. If you go looking for something, I guarantee you, you're going to start finding that stuff everywhere. And the same is true of following your bliss. If you go actively pursuing that bliss, you'll you'll achieve it. You'll find it. So he's he's definitely my greatest influence in in craft and life. Good. So, what goals do you have for the future? You've already said some, but um, what others do you have? Yeah. I keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> that's that's certainly the general strategy involved. Um, and and I'm getting some wonderful feedback from people that I'm doing good stuff. So that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, I have this vision of a platform for the web, uh, uh, big fiction. I want to create a, a tool, uh, an online community, where authors can turn their books, their story verses, into a collaborative experience and actually facilitate user-generated content. Uh, you know, maps, timelines, uh, allow, a, a, you know, for, for Lord of the Rings, if Lord of the Rings was up there, you know, maybe somebody had this great idea for the, 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 the bartender at the Prancing Pony. And so they want to work up the Prancing Pony and that bartender. Well, this framework would allow that user to create that profile and upload it. And then write a short story based on that. And then other people could read it and say, oh, that's good. I could do that over here and create this network of creativity. It's a long way down the road, but it's. Uh, I've been discussing it with uh, some, some uh, software developers and uh, other other people in the industry. Uh, give give me a couple of years, but uh, it'll happen. It'll happen. So that's that's my big dream. I've got others about uh, uh, similar frameworks for um, uh, creating live action, not live action, but uh, augmented reality games on the on the cell phone. Uh, uh, tools for creators to very quickly and organically create uh, uh, games that can be played on, on cell phones or, or iPads using geo-positioning and uploaded video and images and so on. 
uh, I've got a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah. I just hope I live long enough to see half of them come to fruition. I hope I live enough to see half of them come into a fruition. Um, when did you know you had to be a writer? to do all you do? <laughs> uh, magic, Jenna. Uh, of course. <laughs> I just put up a, a, a life-size image of a tourist uh, on my window on the door to my studio, um, hoping beyond hope that somehow I'll find the extra hours that's that I need to do all the things that I'm trying to do. Um, you make the time, ultimately, uh, is, is the only answer I can give you. Um, there's, if something is going to compel you strongly to do something, to, to do a podcast, to write a novel, uh, uh, to do a webcomic, whatever it is that, that, that you're going, God, I just wish I had the time to do it. Uh, if you're still at that stage, you may not want it badly enough. Because when the compulsion is on you so strong, you make the time. You get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, or you stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning, whichever type of person you are. Um, Know, your weekends, uh, your, your vacation time. You, if, if you're working that nine to five, or yeah. for most of us, what it was was seven to six, <laughs> uh, five. You know, it's it's a challenge to find those slices of time. You need to reconfigure what you consider to be a, a, a useful slice of time. Uh, a lot of people think, oh God, I can't write unless I have three hours back to back. That is just not true. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope the same thing, certainly, but I found that you can get good writing done in a half hour. Uh, uh, or, you know, you can get mediocre writing done in a half hour. <laughs> but getting the writing done is the key thing because then you come back and you can also do some really good editing in a half hour. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's not going to happen fast uh, until, you know, other things evolve, but you make the time, you take the time that you have, you use it to its best advantage, get it done, write the words, edit the words, and move on from there. That and having a very scary homicidal clock helps. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, with, with, with flamethrowers and grenade launchers. Yes, yes it, it does all kinds of very, very scary stuff. <laughs> um, where is your favorite place to write? Uh, boy, you know, I've tried. 
tried uh, periodically writing like on the front porch on my iPad. I've tried writing in Starbucks because that's what writers do is they write in Starbucks. Mm. Uh, it just doesn't freaking work. Um, in front of my keyboard behind me here is where I do my writing. Uh, that's it's, it, I've done so much work there that it's my workspace, it's a mental space where it's like, you sit down here, you're going to do work, it might be audio work, it might be writing work, but you, you go to where your brain says you're going to work, and you work. Uh, it's habitual for me, but it's where I do it. And to carry on from the, when did you know about writing, is why do you write? Why do I write? That is the question, isn't it? Because if you can answer that question, if you can answer why you are driven in the face of all the odds against you, all of the time constraints that are struggling against you, if you can answer the question of why, then you have the answer to all of the other questions that unfold from, am I good enough? Uh, why am I doing this? How can I possibly put a book out there in the world. So why am I doing it? Because, and I think this is ultimately true of most writers, uh, it's a twofold, twofold deal. One is I'm casting out a lifeline. I'm casting out a call from my tribe. Uh, uh, it, it's like sonar. Uh, these are my ideas. Here's how I express them. Is, does this bounce off of anybody? Does anybody get this at all? Please. Uh, and so you put these words out, you put your podcast out, you put your art out, and you see it goes off of somebody else. You see if it generates a response. Uh, that's your tribe. Those are your people. Uh, and hopefully you attract a wide tribe that affirms some of your ideas and, and introduces you to new ones. So that's part of it, yes, is sort of a, a desperate call to, to my peeps, uh, wherever they may be out there. Um, the other one is arrogance, bold, blind, <laughs> hubris of, of the most unnatural order. Um, <laughs> the, the belief that my perspectives on uh, culture, race, uh, romance, technology, uh, anything have any bearing or, or could actually have some deep in, the, deep in the conversation in some way, that requires a fair bit of just balls, big <laughs> brass balls. Male, female, doesn't matter, it's balls. Um, <laughs> there needs to be, <laughs> there needs to be uh, a sense of I can make the world better by shining a light where where I think it's important and illuminating some aspect of the world I can somehow spark an awareness that will make somebody's life better or somehow smooth a path or, or start a revolution who knows um, then I kind of need to you know and yeah there's 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 arrogance there may be hubris but there's also the belief that I can make a contribution that my perspectives can make a difference and I think that's also a part of the writer's makeup so that's that's why I write <laughs> how does everyday life affect your writing um in every way possible. Um, <laughs> I think uh, the, the, the notion of the of the hermit uh, uh, squirreled away in their little dark closet with the candle and the tapita, tapita, tapita. Uh, God, I hope that's a myth. I, I hope that's not real. Uh, the, the, one of the biggest things that we run into time and time again, you know, on the round table, authenticity uh, and the desire to to, have, to present people uh, authentically, to present situations, to present dialogue, to present cultures realistically. 
the only way you can do that, the only way, is to go out and live it, to go out and explore it, to, you know, if you're not going out as a writer with your, with your antenna up and your parabolic dish on a swivel mount and your recorder reporting how that guy looks and, and what is this girl's response when this guy gets up in her business and, and how does the four-way stop sign work? Because that's just a mystery. Um, if you're not absorbing all of that uh, uh, in, in, in a meaningful way, in, in an intense, honest, curious way, uh, you're missing gold. It's all out there. And of course, you know, readers, uh, writers read. Uh, mm -hmm. So everyday life is going to include uh, the, the media that you consume, whether it's an ebook or a movie or a TV series or whatever. So, you know, your writing ultimately becomes an installation, whether you're aware of it or not, of your everyday life, which is kind of scary. Because <laughs> uh, you're going, no, 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 I'm writing about elves and dwarves and, and wizards. And it's like, mm, yeah, that's, that's the outer facing that you're putting on there. Uh, but really, that wizard is your boss. Yeah. Well, maybe not your boss, but an amalgamation of your boss, uh, your eighth grade biology teacher and and that guy that cut you off <laughs> um, you know your writing is your life uh, your spin your resonance is with the world out there so long long answer to a very simple question everything about life influences my writing and my writing changes as life works its magic on me then I can't see any other way to do it Right. And our last question for the evening is, is there anything else you would like to tell the readers or viewers? Oh, my goodness. Um, yes, lots and lots of things. <laughs> uh, but we don't have the time. Um, I, I will say that uh, the Roundtable podcast is always looking for guest writers, courageous is the term we use, creative and courageous, courageous guest writers to pitch story ideas to our guest hosts. Um, we, uh, so by all means, go to the website, www.roundtablepodcast.com, click on be a guest and fill out the form and you'll be on the list. Um, the other thing I would love to uh, encourage your, your viewers to check out is the new uh, Vex Mosaic magazine. Oh, yes. uh, this is a new easy that I just launched that examines culture and society through the lens of speculative fiction. Uh, so check that out. There's some in, there's already some intriguing insights up there. We had uh, Matt Wallace uh, uh, give his view of futurism in fiction, which I thought was really engaging. Uh, Alistair Stewart gave an incredible insight into what Captain America was doing during Age of Ultron, because <laughs> all of us were wondering, Al laid it out for you. Uh, Dr. Kate Lady has got some great insights into Mad Max and medieval film, and just all kinds of great stuff in there. So, vexmosaic.com. Uh, check that out, and we're also looking for essays. So if you have a rant, a soapbox, or an inspiration, that you think would be appropriate for that vibe, submission guidelines are right up on the site. Uh, and the last thing would be you find what you're looking for. So look for awesome and you'll find it. I promise. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today on uh, Not Quite Therapy. And um, in the words of Ritmo, may the goat be with you. My pleasure, Jenna. This has been a blast. <laughs>